Let's begin. Let's begin. Welcome to To Build an Agency, a podcast where we talk about the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, growth tactics, building businesses, and the events that affect your company. Let's jump right in. Welcome back to the podcast. We are on episode 12, and I'm sitting here in the studio with Atilio. What's up, guys? This is the week of 4th of July. We're actually recording this on 4th of July, so this is like literally... We're, we're recording this on Tuesday. I'm putting it out later today. Uh, yeah. So we, we kind of messed up and uh, didn't record on Sunday when we when we normally record, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. Um, we kind of actually have a short podcast, I think, today. We might be able to we'll see. Uh, draw it out and bring some awesome value. Well, we, we usually start off the podcast every week by, by talking about all the things that we did. You know, usually our events, our, our weeks are way more eventful. Um, than this week was. I mean, it was a lot of like negotiation stuff, some meetings, but I mean, yeah, no, nothing yeah. that's really going to be of interest to our listeners. So yeah, it was kind of like uh, we we did some. Uh, I mean, talking through contract work, we uh, talked to a person who might be working with us. I mean, um, otherwise, it's just kind of like the normal business grind, right? Like. I mean, it was just all, it was all like meetings, negotiations, interviews. Yes. We're setting up a consulting gig for our largest client yet. If you guys uh, heard from last week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, n- nothing really glamorous happened. There weren't any fires to put out. Like nothing like catastrophic happened to our business. <laughs> yeah. Actually, everything was super smooth, which maybe it's us getting better at doing business uh, and kind of like managing, doing the technical work, doing this, that, and the other. So um, I can, I can tell you for sure. Like I, I'm definitely improving in my new role. So good, good. Like, you know, good. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, like for, for new listeners, I mean, I, I started off uh, with this company as the, the kind of like the, the chief creative officer, almost like uh, I was really over creative and, and graphic design and, um, photography, videography, that kind of stuff. And, um, we decided not to offer creative services anymore, so <laughs> I've had to, I've had to adapt into the world of social, and it's been it's been kind of a, a, a roller coaster, but it's been good. I think you've been doing good. So yeah, a, a lot of our a lot of our campaigns are doing well, and I'm just happy with how things are going. But yeah, things are definitely going a lot smoother. I would say. And I mean, also being an owner, you know, you get to wear a bunch of hats. So yeah. it's just something that, you know, we need to do. You don't, you know, in business, you don't always get to play to your strengths if you're the owner. Like sometimes you, you also have to, like, we're, we're real big on like capitalizing on your strengths, but that doesn't always get to happen, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you got to kind of, you know, do whatever you have to do and hire the person that's really good at it. So that way uh, they knock it out of the park and you get to. Um, you know, take care of other things that you might be good at or take care of pushing the business in the direction you want it to go. Yeah. So, um, all right, what, what, what can we talk about here? What can we talk about well, let's here? Well, let's, let's go back to consulting. What, what's going on with that? Um, nothing. It's a negotiation right now. It's a negotiation phase. It's a billion-dollar company that we're working with or that we'll be working with. Um, and pretty much we'll just be doing a ton of analytics and management for their team. And, um, we were able to kind of display our expertise to them in our first meeting and they called us back for a second meeting. And, um, after the second meeting, we sort of established the parameters. They, they talked about what they wanted. Um, and we were very preemptive. So we had a ton of, uh, work done for them already. Um, and so we just kind of laid out papers. We gave them a game plan. They sort of liked everything. We came in one day to just kind of uh, show them sort of what would be going on if we were to work with them. Um, they really liked it. They asked for a contract. And so boom, bam, bop. I mean. For sure. You know? Yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. I mean, I, I think that, that this consulting gig is really going to stretch us like in terms of like how adaptive we are. Like I think we've always been pretty you know, adaptive with – with our clients and our campaigns, but this time we're essentially leading a, a team that isn't ours. Yeah, it's a little weird, I think. Um, so we have, we have to accomplish the same results with, with not our team. Yeah, but know. it, it kind of also relieves us of pressure. Yeah. So, you know, if they didn't perform, it's not like, hey, we're, fire the agency because they didn't perform. No, it's more like, 
hey, our employees aren't performing. And it's like, well, we gave them the game plan. We gave them the research. We gave them the education. Uh, we, we literally told yeah. them what to do. <laughs> we told them what to do. We're not standing behind them or over their shoulders. So that's also sort of the really nice bit about it is yeah. that like, hey, they didn't do what we told them to. So you can't like backlash at us. And the guys seem really cool. So yeah, they, they're eager to learn yeah. and, and all that. So we, we were starting off just uh, kind of being analysts for them and, and kind of like managers planning planning their their campaign ideas or, or planning planning a campaign around their like their quarterly KPIs and uh, we kind of we kind of realized that a lot of this was also gonna have to be like an education gig too so we're also having to teach more which I think is pretty fun yeah I mean I talk a lot and I think it's because I have sort of like a dominating attitude in general uh, or like mentality sort of like I just kind of am, am, I'm like on top of it I'm sort of the aggressor and I want to push things forward so maybe that'll play to my strong suit for education um I also ask a lot of questions so uh hopefully that sort of is a good medley for, for yeah. teaching I, I don't I, I tend to think that I'm a bad teacher but maybe that's not true I've done like tutoring in the past and I know I've helped like like back when I used to do biology I've tutored people in biology or like I've tutored people in math before or whatever. So I think, I think you'll be better than you think you will, but cross my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big contract. <laughs> nah, so that's funny. Uh, but yeah. Uh, did you want to go into the, uh, so we, we pulled up an article. We, we can talk about the article. I think, I mean, I don't know if I, really want to touch on some other things i mean this past week we also talked about or talked to um an e-commerce site that's not really making too much mm -hmm. cash um did you want to like touch on that briefly or well yeah like i'll i i typed this out on our on our agenda day because I, I was thinking about like our, our sales episode that i thought did super well uh we we really talked about like how to qualify leads and then what to do with those. But like, what do you do with unqualified leads? Like, so you, and I'll just lay the groundwork out for that. Like you, you come across a client that actually is sold on your services. They, they're like, Oh wow. Like you guys are a great SEO company. We, we like what you're providing. We actually think you'll be able to, you know, help us improve or, or make more money. Um, but they, they were just not a good fit for them. <clears throat> so yeah i mean i would say just say no uh like don't even talk to them i could probably sell him something like super small but it might not be like that effective for well, him what what would disqualify someone as a lead uh it depends so in our case we disqualify people based on money straight up uh if you can afford us um or like budget and also sort of like if you have an in-house marketing team that can provide like you know, content or, you know, it, it depends what you're selling. It depends, um, who you're selling to and you just have to be aware of what makes them a really good customer or a really good candidate for your services slash product, um, versus a not so good candidate for your services slash product. For sure. Um, budget matters quite a bit. Yeah, it, it matters. I mean, some people, it might not matter as much, you know, if you're selling a service that's, you know, a, a $2 subscription. Yeah. You know, budget doesn't matter so much there, but I just, I just think back to our first few social media clients where they're wanting to pay us like super low, uh, prices for, um, for social media, but they weren't paying us to create content for them and they weren't paying anyone else to create content for them and they weren't creating content for, for them. So it's like you run into this problem of, yeah, I can I can post relevant articles or I can find blog posts that your art your audience might be into, but if you're not putting out your own content, like what's the point of anyone following you or, or liking your page? Yeah, or, you're just an aggregate yeah, of you're just <laughs> content. An ag you're just an aggregate of crap that your audience likes, and um, it's just really not effective for your brand, and it's not good. So I mean, what what like we we've used thumbtacks sometimes to to get to get leads. So yeah. We, we get all these like alerts, like someone wants uh, social media for under 500 a month. And I'm like, awesome. That's great. But Do you are, have a marketing team to back that? Are they, <laughs> yeah. Well, are you making content? Like, 
do you value like original content? Is that something that you're, you're desiring? And so, yeah, I mean, I think social media is one of the most effective, like marketing tools your business will ever experience, but you, you have to invest in it. Like it, it's not something that, um, you can just, you know, put a hundred bucks on, you know, a, a month and assume that you're going to get great, you know, yields from that. I also think though, that it's also like the service provider who has to bring that to it to the customer's attention. Yeah. So our first social media clients, maybe we didn't do a good enough job at uh, ousting them, you know? Well, I think I think something or a mistake that we made was we, we got too eager to get clients to try services we wanted to perform with. So like we wanted to we wanted to perform, you know, X service so badly that we we knew we could offer we hadn't yet that we were like, yeah, yeah we'll do we'll we'll throw in the service because we wanted jump to jump right in. Yeah. Well we wanted to also have like a track record with that service so we we knew what we could offer later to larger clients. Um, and I, I don't think that was like probably the best way to go about it, but it's what we did. And, um, I don't know. I mean, they're still with us. It's the, not they're, like they're, they're still, they're up. still with us and, and some things are, are, are going better. Like we've adapted like different client strategies based around like how low their budget is. But I mean, if you want to see like really, really good, um, really good results with social, you're going to have to pay for content or you're going to make your own, you know? Like it, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Um, yeah. Now selling home content creation. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, absolutely. And I, I think as a new business owner, so if you're an, uh, like a new startup owner or an entrepreneur or something, knowing your boundaries and knowing, um, like sort of having expertise with your field or some prowess on you know, what qualifies in and qualifies out people is going to make your service more valuable um, because then your customers would be able to provide uh, for it, you know? Yeah, don't don't be afraid to turn a customer down just because you're you're desperate to get those contracts in, you yeah, know? There's going to be more. There, there, will, there will always be more contracts and, and there will be more, there'll be companies that are actually, um, you know, willing to put the budget in to, to get the returns and... Yeah, yeah. That's how that's you need to get anyways. And, that, and that's how you end up with a, a great social media, you know, um, campaign and, and all that. And that, that even, like, goes to ads. I mean, what, what I've noticed is, like, the higher your budget is within a smaller, um, like, time frame, the better. So, like, some of our clients, they'll say, like, oh, yeah, you've got, like, a $250 budget monthly. Uh, sometimes they actually get better... Um, better results if I just like blow the whole 250 in like five days rather than spread it out over the month because you know the way Facebook's bidding system works like you it, have it, to outbid people yeah, you, you're, you're outbidding people <laughs> yeah. for a slot so, so like so if you're not using your full budget that day it's because your your budget is not high enough because you have to be able to outbid you know what I mean like people so if you're walking away with like hey I, I save money on my budget on Facebook that's actually not a good thing like I mean it means your ad lost to a ton of other slots and a lot of the people that could have bought your services. So it's actually always good to, to even like cram like your budget into a smaller, you know, a smaller portion of time. So more people will see the ad than like spread it out and you know, less people see it. I don't know. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and I think for people who don't know about the ad system, it takes two factors into consideration. It's like a relevancy factor and then a like monetary factor and you have to win on sort of both fronts or be more relevant than the other and then you'll only pay as much as the lowest yeah like the second next or the second highest bid yeah so, so you're you're always you're always in like this ad auction based on your based on your budget so um if you and and one other ad have are, are relevant to the audience you're targeting they're going to see who's got the most money for that spot and they're going to take it. So uh, you want to be spending your whole budget. If you're spending your entire budget uh, for, for the day, uh, that means that your ad, your ad bid well. Yeah, it was performing well um, against It performed others. great. Um, kind of what Attilio mentioned was there's like this thing called like a relevancy score. Um, and, and that really kind of measures like um, how well the audience you're targeting is responding to your ad via clicking on it, 
or, or liking your page or whatever, whatever action that you were, you, you kind of programmed into the ad. It, it, it sees how well that, that audience is responding to your ad and gives you a relevancy source score. So, you know, like, Hey, this ad's actually performing really good with my target audience or, Hey, this is really bad. And it's like a, it's on a scale of like one to 10. So like, if you've got like a, a seven to a, to a 10 on a relevancy score, your ad's doing fairly good. Uh, or actually really good. If, if, if it's lower than that, you need to make some serious adjustments. Serious. Serious. Yeah. No, but seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I guess that kind of feeds into um, why the whole funnel sort of matters. So a lot of people only take a look at uh, one aspect of their marketing, uh, like advertisements sure. or... Uh, super top of the funnel or super bottom of the funnel aspects. Um, when it boils down to it, you should be working on, and, and this is coming from a marketing company, you should be working on the entire thing. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think that, like, for us, we're, we, we're really good at, at full funnel services, but I would definitely say, like, over, the, over like, our comp- company's entire history, top of the funnel service has been our bread and butter but that does, that isn't going to save your business. Like, um, kind of one, one thing that a lot of businesses kind of get the misconception about is that they think that SEO is going to save their company. If it's, if it's like already doing really bad, SEO can't save your company. SEO is, is going to bring more traffic into your company that's already, you know, performing and converting fairly well. So, um, you know, kind of back, kind of even back on Facebook ads, you could have the best Facebook ad, you could have a relevancy score of a 10 and people could be responding to your ad and go into the website. But if the rest of the page doesn't convert well, you're not making any money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like probably losing money. So, you know? so now you, you have to learn to determine like, am I, am, is, you know, we hear a lot of people say, well, Facebook ads didn't work for me. And I'm like, well, was it the, was it the ad or was it the website? Yeah. Like, like what, what was it? Like, did you, were you able to check your relevancy score? Like, how did it perform? Did you use your whole budget? That matters. What conversion um, rates were you getting? What con- yeah. What conversion rates were you getting? So like, other. You may be having incorrect expectations out of how much you need to spend to get one sale. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, you, you, you can't just like, tr- like try Facebook ads once and just assume that if, if it works, it works for me. If I got no leads from it it didn't work for me. You need to be looking at the metrics of your own website too. Like how's it doing in the middle of the funnel? Like, is it converting? Is, is it getting them all the way down to the bottom of the funnel? Yeah. Like it absolutely matters in, in such a huge way. Like it, your, your website has to be optimized to, to convert, you know? So that that's either, it has to be optimized for you to, re, to, to receive those emails or those phone numbers that you need to get to, to call those leads. Or, or if you're running an e-commerce site, that they can come and buy that article of clothing that you're selling, or they can, they can order whatever, you know, that, that you're trying to sell through your e-commerce site. Yeah. So. And that goes for inbound or outbound methods, yep. right? Uh, so, so be very aware of, uh, your buyer's journey, mm-hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> if people have to come from, from off of the street, maybe make it very apparent for them to, to get to you from off the street. Or if, um, and, you know, that would be the top of the funnel, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, once they're your customer, make sure you're you're continuing to talk to them. Have some sort of email system. Have some sort of uh, some sort of champion system where these guys where, where your customers become champions for you. Yeah. Uh, or start referring you to their friends somehow. So uh, business goes well beyond being a customer and it happens well before they even know about you. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's very important to know all of the steps in there. And that kind of leads into like our article today. Um, I think another like extremely amazing benefit of hiring an agency is that if, if your agency is, is doing really good at staying current, they're going to be able to, to adapt your campaign to like your needs in that moment yeah, well, as things are adapting. And it's sort of also the reason why you hire an agency, I think. Uh, you know, it, it, it alleviates red tape because they can move quick generally and they bring a level of expertise and innovation to the table that mm-hmm. uh, sort of a larger company or maybe even a small business may not even be able to provide. Uh, so hopefully that's why you're hiring an agency. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So our article today is actually, what is it titled? Let's see. Four yeah. things... 
it's uh, four things uh, in marketing that you need to stay current with, I believe, something like that. Yeah. It's from Think with Google. Four things you need to know about the future of marketing. That's what it's called. Um, and so I guess we can just touch on sort of the titles. I don't know if you want to go deep into it. Oh, we, we, just, read it. we were reading this earlier, and, and there's some really great um, – great nuggets of wisdom in there and just some, some statistics I'd never even like read. So I think it's really good. Uh, by the way, if you are, are looking to stay current with the, uh, kind of the, the future of online marketing or, or where marketing is going or trying to just stay current with, if you want to make more sales in general, <laughs> if you, if you, yeah. yeah, if you're trying to understand like consumer behavior and, and what all is happening now, you need to be subscribed to think with Google. It is amazing. We we read articles from Think with Google constantly, and, and we're learning and, and growing and adapting because of them. Um, so I think it's great for sure. But um, this one's really kind of talking about um, mobile marketing and and where it's going and and what's happening to it. And so one of the things that this article was talking about, which I thought was astounding, is the ways that people are are going to be getting assistance will be evolving. Um, so it says, mobile has conditioned consumers to turn to their devices in the I want to know, I want to go, I want to do, I want to buy micro moments. Now the ways people get assistance will evolve too, from typing on devices to speaking to them. For example, in the Google app, 20% of searches are now by voice. And that's a preview of what's to come. So 20% of, of the Google app's searches one fifth of them are are by voice. Yeah, and that's actually not surprising at all. I mean, I I actually posted about this a couple of days ago on LinkedIn um, about how big voice search is in the B two B environment. I mean, people are using voice search in their offices at home when they're by themselves, uh, and it's staggeringly in some of the higher echelons of uh, wages. So. Uh, you know, this is being used by some of the some of the people who like have to go, have to get things done, right? Uh, they're in the car, they're they're texting, they don't want to stop texting, you know, so they just do a, a quick voice text or something, uh, and then do a quick voice search, like Mexican restaurants near me, right? Uh, if if you want Mexican food, so you know the, these things are increasingly being used, and uh, lucky for us, there's a voice search SEO uh, that you can actually start implementing. Um, and it's, it, it, it's an awesome sphere. It's, it's really cool. It's a place to go. I have no doubt in my mind that 20% of searches are now being done by voice. Well, so I've got a, like my, my dad is 67. He just turned 67 this week. And, uh, last Christmas we actually bought him one of those, uh, Amazon Alexa, like the, the black tower thing with the speaker on it that you can set up and ask questions or whatever. And my dad uses it all the time now. It's like, actually a part of his daily routine. It's like, Alexa, what's the weather like today? Or, or just whatever, you know, whatever other commands you can give it. Like, but he's always like using that thing. And I, I think it's going to, it's going to, it's going to end up in like the consumer sphere uh, in terms of like an example being uh, Alexa, I need a plumber. Alexa, I need a marketing company. Mm -hmm. Alexa, um, you know, Buy my groceries. Buy my groceries. Jeff Bezos just bought Whole Foods, right? So I'm sure he's going to move into that that sphere very soon. Yeah. Into so that market. If you're running an agency right now and you're not learning how to optimize for voice SEO, it's going to be one of your staple services in the next five years. I highly recommend that you get very, very acquainted with it. Because uh, I personally am planning on being at the top of the list when someone says, Alexa, I need a marketing company. I plan on being right there at the, at the yeah. very top. How come I'm not getting as many customers? Alexa, what's two plus two? Alexa, <laughs> marry me. You know, all those weird <laughs> searches Alexa, too. What, what's five plus five? Hone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That'd be funny. But for sure. And then it kind of goes on to uh, how consumers want a frictionless mobile experience, uh, which is... Pretty self-explanatory. Google just came out with AMP. Um, and the article kind of talks about for every second delay in mobile page load, conversions fall by 20%. So it's not even just about having a mobile site anymore. Like if you don't have a mobile site, you're already like so far behind it hurts. But if it's not just about having the mobile site for, for SEO and you know the fact that consumers are on their phones all the time, but every single second like of delay that a customer sp like spends waiting for your site to load 
conversions may fall by 20%. Your your mobile site has to perform very well. And it doesn't even say may fall. It says fall by 20%. You know, like these, these things like matter. These are stats that people are gathering. So literally, I mean, and, and Google and big companies are trying to facilitate it by putting out AMP. Uh, all you have to do is insert some like rich snippets uh, to your site or I think it's some extra structured data onto your website and it literally increases uh, the speed. It decreases load times by like 20 to 80% for ad loads and for your page loading. So if you have a page that's just running ads, you literally get 20 to 80% more time out of it, um, which could be huge in like a, in like a monthly or a yearly spectrum. Um, just extra roles and then extra visitors that aren't bouncing or uh, people that are just waiting there and then, you know, they end up not converting because they waited there for eight seconds, you know? So, yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty interesting. And your mobile site doesn't just matter if you're just, if you're trying to sell something like via e-commerce, like there, people are starting to like measure their actual brick and mortar in-store visits with Google AdWords. Like, so people like people's behavior of walking into a brick and mortar shop um, are actually being very like, heavily connected to seeing an ad online via Facebook or Google or, or whatever. Um, they're, they're seeing the ad and they're actually going to that store if that's the preferred method of buying. So even if you're only trying to get brick and mortar traffic, like in-store traffic into your into your store, you need to be on mobile you need to have a mobile website that that performs well and you need to use uh targeted facebook ads or google ads that are going to be helpful and, and beneficial to to you know the consumer yeah um, you know that's actually awesome I, I really like that people are doing that because and, and it totally makes sense too we have so much geolocalization <laughs> stuff that like literally facebook knows when you when you just ate somewhere or when you just shopped somewhere uh, I don't know if you've ever been hit with one of those surveys, but it's like, hey, were you just at Starbucks on, uh, you know, 25th Street or whatever, wherever you live? Uh, so, like, Facebook knows where you are. Google knows where you are. They know that if you've clicked on an ad or if you've done a certain search thing, you know, three days prior, they know all of your search history. They know everything. Um, you know, privacy is an illusion at this point. And so... People can see all these stats when you're walking into brick and mortars. People can see that, uh, you know, online ads are effective. People can see that offline ads aren't so effective. Um, and that kind of pulls us into expectations for advertising is rising. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's being increasingly difficult now for people to advertise because people aren't leaving as much space for advertisement anymore. Uh, you know, there's Netflix now, so you don't need cable. Why would you use cable when you have to watch, you know, commercials here and there? You can just DVR things. You can TiVo things. You know, you don't need to watch these commercials. Marketers are ruining everything these days. And so expectations are obviously rising for them. Um, People want to be sold to you at a certain time, but they also, they're also picky about like what you're trying to sell them. So the, the, the content of the ad has to be good. The, the placement of the ad has to be perfect. And on top of that, they need to be interested in the, in the kind of ads that you're, you're showing them. So an example of this is I've noticed recently I'm getting nothing but online marketing advertisements. All these SEO companies, uh, I get HubSpot ads constantly. Like Google and Facebook know that Travis Swearingen owns a marketing company or is, reads a lot of articles about online marketing or I've clicked on ads about online marketing. And so now that's, that's all the content I'm getting. And so these guys that are targeting, uh, targeting guys like me are, are actually getting those clicks and probably a lot of dudes are, are converting on it. So your mobile experience also matters with your ads because you have to, you have to tailor the ads and the, and the content of the ads and what you're selling in the ads to the people that are wanting those specifically. So you need to understand your target audience and, and optimize your mobile experience for them. Also, a further solution is using content to deliver an advertisement without it being an advertisement. Um, and so what I mean by that is using a blog post to hit people before they even know they want to work with you um, or using video to capture people's attention. You don't need to advertise. You don't need to do outreach if everyone's coming to you at the right time. Um, 
and and that that comes in the form of being clever with your advertisement, being clever with how you're putting out content, being clever with how you're displaying yourself. Um, it's it's a super interesting, super evolving world. I mean, this is all information based now. Um, we are living in the information based world, really. So, for sure. Awesome article, I think. Um, you guys should check it out if you're interested at all in the future of the market or how to, um, you know, get ahead. I think the article was created May, May of this year, May 2017. So um, check yeah. it out. It's pretty current. If you're not on mobile, it's pretty redundant information. Um, if you're not on mobile, obviously you're losing. Um, so stay on the uh, stay stay ahead, right? Stay ahead of the pack. <laughs> For sure. Well, we're at 32 minutes. I think the uh, the episode was longer than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, we managed to draw it out, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, from an uneventful week, we kind of... Ho- hopefully, we brought some good value. I think we did. Uh, there were some decent little nuggets there for some business owners who are sort of behind the loop or some uh, new business owners, I think. So. For sure. Awesome. Well... Happy 4th of July, everyone. Uh, Celebrate with your families. Hope things are going great. Uh, Let us know any questions, comments, anything you have. We we love just uh, getting to know a lot of you guys and and what you guys are into and the kind of content you guys want to want to hear about. Yeah, we're at about 500 monthly visitors right now. For sure. So this is like beautiful. It's growing. We hope to eclipse it this month. (laughs) Uh, I'm thinking 750 at least, maybe even 1,000 this month. Maybe if we do some pushing for it, who knows? For sure. I, I think... I think something that I really want to see is um, maybe some more targeted educational episodes. Like I, I think our I think our most fire episode that we've had so far was the sales episode. Really, I liked it. Okay, <laughs> but I think it was good, and I think a lot of people like got some real good nuggets of wisdom out of it. And so maybe we can find you know a time to do like one on Facebook ads and like. Maybe like tutorial style or yeah, something. yeah, like tutorial style. I mean, dude, yeah. I so want to pair these with video. But, yeah. Anyway, that, that'll have to be down the line. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. For but, sure. But anyways, happy 4th of July. We love you guys. We'll talk peace. to you next week on episode 13. See ya. <laughs>